Hi, I'm Coach Dan Clemens, and welcome to another edition of Tips for a Perfect Season. Okay, coaches, how many of us have pulled into the parking lot for practice, unloaded the gear, and started walking down to the field, and then and only then did we start thinking about what are we going to do with the kids for the next 90 minutes? I don't have a plan. All right, how many of us? All right, I admit, I've, I've been there and done that once. I didn't have any time that day. I had a busy day at work. Didn't have time to put together a, a detailed practice plan or even write down what I really wanted to accomplish in that 90 minutes. So I made that mistake once. I realized that as coaches, we have to make the time because a slow, boring, disorganized practice is a waste of time, both, both mine, the kids, and, and the parents, and it's a passion killer. Nobody likes standing around just wondering what they're going to do next and kind of stumbling around from, from drill to drill that don't really seem to be connected to anything. And that's what gives baseball a bad rap in the first place is that there's just too much standing around. So if your practices aren't crisp and, and things are moving and kids are feeling like they're learning something, we run the risk of, of killing passion. So I suggest having a written practice plan. That's what I do now. I, and I make that practice plan after our, my last practice or after my last game when the needs are fresh in my mind. I can think about what went well at the last practice and what maybe needs to happen next. Um, or if it's a game, I can think about the, the mistakes that we made and the things that I need to reinforce in, in the next practice. So I'll write down uh, my notes and, and at least have that as a working draft that I can improve upon prior to the next practice. So. What should a good practice plan include? I'll tell you what, there are a lot of great templates out there, and I don't think there's one right or wrong way of doing it. Find one that you like. But you can even start with just a blank piece of paper. And what I suggest is, first, write down the three or four things you want and need to accomplish in that practice. That's critical. Those should be at the top of the page, top of mind, and everything that you do during that practice ought to somehow funnel up to one of those, those, those things. From there, you can plan the drills uh, that you want to use to accomplish those things. I find a lot of times that coaches get excited about drills, and so they, they plan the drills and then figure out what they want to accomplish. That's the, wrong, that's the wrong order. Make sure that the drills that you choose are going to help you accomplish those, those three or four things that need to be done. I would also uh, include uh, rough time frames in each of my practice plans so I know that, okay, hitting is going to be this many minutes, fielding is going to be this many minutes. Break it down that way. Don't always have to stick to it down to the minute with your stopwatch out there, but that gives you a rough idea of how that, that practice is going to go and the relative amount of weight you're placing on, on each of those um, things that you need to accomplish. Also, uh, I, I make notes of uh, individuals that I need to talk to, uh, players that, that need some specific instruction or something that's happened in a game that I want to single them out and pull them aside and explain something that, ha that happened, or if, if I've got a discipline issue or, or something that's not going right, I want to make sure that I, I note that in my practice plan so I can make time to pull those kids uh, out of practice and, and talk to them. Well, that wraps up this edition of Tips for a Perfect Season. In the next edition, we'll talk about the practice plan and what the benefits are to you as a coach. Thanks for tuning in, and here's to your perfect season.